Hey there guys and girls, my name is Aaron Robbins and this is a Magic of Voxel to Maya to Unity tutorial. Or basically what I'm going to show you or demonstrate today is how to take a model that you've made in Magic of Voxel um, and then animate it in some program and then get those animations plus um, your model into the Unity game engine. So the middle piece of software that I'm using here, Maya, um, that's just what I'm most comfortable in, but any program that will allow you to export an FBX with animation and all that stuff attached to it will work. So 3D Studio Max, Blender, whatever you got is fine, um, but you'll just have to sort of guess for the middle part. Not guess, but you'll have to use what you know about your program to get the FBX file. So here we are in Magic of Voxel. All I have is this little Space Invader guy that's pretty uh, easy to model from whatever reference from your head, from pixel art, whatever. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit the shrink size here button so that the work area is constrained around the actual bounds of the model. Not a big deal. I, I don't even think you need to do that, but I like to do it because it makes me feel tidy. Um, and I wish there were more buttons that I needed to press in Magic of Voxel, but once you have your model all done, um, this is just a two-color model, so there's only two swatches I'm using from over here. We're just going to go up to File and hit Export. And we are looking for the OBJ, or the object file to export. So we're going to go ahead and select that one. We'll call it spaceinvader1.obj. We're going to hit save. And I'm going to get a warning because I've actually tried to record this video now a few times, but I'm terrible at doing videos, and so I have to replace it instead of save it as a fresh file. Okay, so I replaced my model, um, but that's really all there is to it. Magic Voxel export it out there. Then you're going to open up your 3D package. I'm going to open up Maya, and I'm going to go ahead and select import. And I'm going to select that file from uh, the desktop. You can see there's my spaceinvader1.obj, and it came with a material file and the PNG, which is uh, part of that material. And I'm going to go ahead and hit import. And I got uh, my, mod my model in here. No big deal, right? And I want to color it just to make sure it has color. So I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, the 6 key there to make sure that it's all colored and everything came in appropriately. And the next step now is to just start animating um, my object. And I don't need to, I'm not gonna like go through the whole process, but I'm not doing anything tricky here. There's no blend shapes, no rigging, um, no nothing like that. I'm literally just selecting the model, hitting S to set a keyframe or whatever uh, keyframe option you have in your program. The first two frames I will tell you I'm gonna make, or the first part of it, I'm gonna make the idle cycle, or basically what the animation should look like when the character is doing nothing. So I would just do that for two frames here, uh, and that will be my idle cycle, frame one and two, uh, frame one and two. From two to, we'll say like 25 or something, I'm gonna go ahead and set another keyframe, and then somewhere so that he returns to back where he was. That's why I set the keyframe at the end. And then somewhere in the middle, uh, I'll set another keyframe and then just do something exciting with the model like that. Set that keyframe. And now I've got him doing that. That's great. And then from 25 to 26, I'm gonna go ahead and set two other just frames of non-motion. Then from 26 to we'll go 46, um, I could do some other kind of animation. All of these like translate and rotate animations could be done inside of Unity natively. You don't need to do that. But that's all I'm doing right now. There's nothing exciting going on here in terms of blend shapes or rigged characters, anything like that. This would just be how to animate a simple model. I already have one um, that I animate a little more. I'm just going to show you that really quickly because I didn't want to have to make you guys watch me animate um, this little Space Invader guy. So here we go. I'm going to go and select him. You say same thing. I have keyframes here on the timeline. This is my idle cycle. And then I have this little just sway back and forth motion, which is just a little bit of translate and a little bit of rotate and X. And then I have another cycle here from uh, 26 to, uh, where did I start that? I don't know where I started that. From whatever, 37 that does this little jumpy thing. And that's really it. Again, no rigging, no blend shapes, no nothing like that. So once you're done animating your, uh, your model, I'm going to go ahead and just set my timeline to uh, 51 here. So that's the kind of end. Uh, sorry, 51. I'm going to go ahead and set that there. So these are all the animations I have. I have three clips in here. Idle. Uh, sway and jump. And they're all in the same timeline, all attached to this guy. I'm going to go up to File, and then I'm going to select Export. There is this really neat uh, Send to, it's not really neat, the Send to Unity option. I don't know when that showed up, 2015, 16 for Maya, something like that. But um, all that I can figure that it does is basically it is a save as with a directory selection um, first, and then it just exports the FBX. I don't understand how it's super different. I'm not aware that there's like a direct connection between the FBX 
model. Unity could take a Maya uh, .mb file in natively, which would seem more helpful because then the updates in Maya are linked to Unity. But anyways, there is this send to Unity option. What we're going to do is essentially the same thing. So we'll just do it the old school way. And we're going to go ahead and select export selection, just our model. And then we're going to get this dialog here. And don't need to worry about this, just a file save dialog over here. But this is the fun part over here because this is the FBX exporter. Um, I do have a preset set up for uh, baked animation or for going to Sketchfab or something like that, but let's just go with the default Autodesk Media and Entertainment export. Okay, so no matter what program you are in and exporting, we'll take a look at these options really quick. The general options, fine. Default file extensions, referenced options, those are going to be good. Include options is fine. Uh, preset. So this is where it gets exciting is in the include section. Like, what do you want to include with your FBX file? Geometry? Yep, we're going to need some of that. Uh, animation, yep, we're going to need that, and we're also going to bake our animation from 1 to 51. It took that from the time slider, that's why I updated that earlier, and so that's good. Deformed models, we don't have any of that, so I'm going to just uncheck that, but feel free to leave it checked, it doesn't matter. Um, and then some other stuff you want to include. Cameras, nope, we're going to be in Unity, I don't need that. Lights, nope, I would do that in Unity, don't need that. Embed media, like the material and all that stuff, yes, I definitely want my material and all those things to come over. Um, the connections, we don't have any input connections, we could get rid of those, but I'll leave them checked, not a big deal. Uh, and everything else is great. So that's really all. Starting from then, just the uh, the Adobe one if you don't have a preset saved. Um, that's about the, uh, the settings you'd be looking for. And I'm just going to call this, uh, we'll call it Invader. And we'll save that out to the, uh, probably would help if we saved it to uh, a Unity directory where we had a project opened. You could save it to just your desktop right now and drag it into Unity. It really doesn't matter. Um, but we have this demo projects here and the Space Invaders Unity project. This is just a you know, blank 3D Unity project. There's nothing special going on here. You do want to save it in your assets folder or else it won't get imported uh, immediately or automatically, I should say. So I'm in the assets folder of my blank project and I'm going to hit export selection and there it went ahead and did that for me. So now we're going to leave Maya behind and switch over to Unity. And now we are in Unity and you can see it brought in um, my invader model, uh, a invader.fbm file, which is a material. It has a uh, the PNG in there that comes out of Magic of Voxel. Um, so you can actually edit these, edit a couple versions of these in Photoshop. Like you could make a night version of this texture and bring them in here. And then it created a material for us, which has that texture mapped to it right there. So if I went ahead and select that, you can see that that is the same PNG file um, that came in or that came out of Magic of Voxel. Great. So now we have our invader model. First thing we're going to do is just drag him into the scene. And it would be helpful if we were actually looking at the scene window. So I'm just going to drag him into the scene and then set his... Uh, to zero, 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 and I can see he's super duper way too small. So it's not a big deal down here in your assets. Just go ahead and select the guy. We're going to go ahead and over to model and the scale factor. I'm going to change to 25 and then I'm going to hit apply here at the bottom and it's going to make it a ton bigger for me and I feel okay about that size. The problem is though is that my guy is facing the wrong direction. And so I could just rotate him. Not a big deal there, right? Just rotate him so he's facing the camera. Um, but the problem with that in this particular scenario is that I have rotate uh, keyframes on him that are baked. Um, so even if I were to play, uh, rotate him, as soon as an animation play, it's going to snap him back into the position he was where he was animated. So that's a pretty easy problem to fix. I'm just going to go ahead and create an empty game object, and I will call it uh, Invader Wrapper. And this doesn't have any animation applied to it. Um, didn't mean to check that. And I will put the invader, uh, make sure it's zeroed, um, which it's not. It has rotation applied to it because I was demonstrating that. Make sure that is zeroed, which it is. And I'm just going to drag that guy underneath there. Um, and then I can rotate this guy and not affect the animation. Um, so the reason why I did that is because the animation that has rotation keyframes on on my invader was going to overwrite any sort of rotating that I did there. Okay, so now we have our model facing us. Everything is great like that. Now you're like, stop talking, just get to the animating part. Okay, so here's what we do. We select the model, the Magic of Voxel model that was brought into Unity and then exported as an FBX file into Unity. We've set it scale. Now we need to go over to the rig section. We don't need to because we're going to use Mechanum. I don't know how to say that. Mechanum, 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 whatever you want to say. Uh, but this is the legacy system for Unity if you were going to use the animation and call your animations directly like animation.play and then the name of your animation. Um, but we're, we're going to use the new one, the generic Mechanum. Mechanum. I don't know why I keep saying it. Mechanum animation. 
So that'll allow, allow us to use the fancy dancy animator and all that kind of stuff. So you actually don't need to make any updates here. So you're like, stop touching tabs that um, we don't need to do anything with. I just wanted to show it to you. Next, we're gonna move over to the animations tab, and this is where all the fun and magic happens. Um, so right now, we saw we found one clip starting at one and 51, and that's not one clip, man. That is actually three clips that I made. Um, so thank, I wanna thank Unity for finding those. That's awesome. Um, we can watch them all, the jump and all that, but it is not one clip, it is three clips. An idle, a sway, and a jump. So let's start taking care of that. First one is idle, so we're just gonna retitle that, and idle is not spelled that way. Um, so we'll go spell it the correct way. And it's not 1 to 51, so we need to clamp the range and actually set this down to 2, because I know it's two keyframes. Um, so I'm going to do that, and we're good for there. Now we need another uh, clip, because we have another one. So we're going to go ahead and select another one, and it's not going to be called Take a One. We're going to call this one Sway. What happened when I did that, by the way? Let's go ahead and hit Apply here really quickly. Okay, now after that I hit Apply. Um, what Unity did was create two uh, animation clips for me here, one called Idle and one called Sway. Um, and we can see Idle does nothing, and we can see that Sway is all messed up because I haven't clamped. Um, it does that, and then probably the jump, because I have not clamped it yet. So let's go back to the Animations tab, select our Sway animation, hit Clamp Range, and I believe that one went from like whatever. If you don't remember, just cycle it in the, you know, look at the preview there. I think it starts at 26 and goes to whatever, I don't know where the sway, oh no, the sway starts at two, what are you, three? What are you talking about? The sway started at three, there's the sway happening, and now the sway is over by 26. So that's the last frame of the sway, he's moving and then he stops, so we'll do that. We'll hit apply and we have one more to do, just one more, promise, well this is fun, you guys are enjoying this, right? So then we're gonna go ahead and make the last one which is the jumpy thing, so we'll call it jump. And we need to clamp the range, of course. And this one starts at what? What does it start at? Uh, there we go, it's starting right there. So we'll head and go ahead and say it starts at 37 and goes to 50. And we'll hit apply there, and we're actually done at this point in time. So we have three clips, idle, jump, and sway. And so we hit play on our game, and nothing happens. Because although we've created three clips, and my, our Unity is aware of those, we've actually done nothing to bring those into the animator, the mechanum system, or anything like that. If you look at the animator, this is where all of our clips are going to show up. You're going to actually see we have no, no object selected. But even when I select the invader object, there's nothing going on. There's no clips there. I just created the clips, but they're not there yet. It's like, why? Why is that? And that is because although our invader has an animator component added to it, which you can just always add, you know, through the add component here, um, it doesn't have an animation controller. So it has nothing that's aware of any clips. It has nothing that can control clips. It's just using the runtime animation controllers, nothing there. And that's gonna be why this area here is gray. So what we need to do is go ahead down here in our assets and we're just gonna go to create. I just right clicked there, create, and then we need to make an animation controller. And I'm gonna call this uh, invader anim ctrl because that's just a really long name and I like that. So then I'm gonna select my invader and I'm gonna, uh, actually I'm not gonna select my invader, I'm gonna select my invader up in the scene here um, so that I can see all of his components. And what I need to do then is just left click and drag that animation controller I just created into the uh, controller property there. Okay, so awesome, that's what you want. You wanna see the invader anim controller, which is this guy right here on your guy and what happened, I don't know if you noticed what happened, but what happened is I actually got a grid now on my box. Before it was empty, it was just like a gray area, now it has a grid. And you're like, that's awesome, let's hit play and see that nothing still is happening. And the reason why nothing happening is there's no clips. You can see there's no clips. There is the uh, any state uh, and the entry state, but there is no other clips to play. So we actually need to put our clips in there. So we'll go ahead and just drag idle up there and we'll go ahead and drag jump up there and we'll go ahead and drag sway up there. And so uh, Idle's gonna actually play now. If I hit play on Unity, you'll see that Idle's gonna play and it's super exciting because Idle does nothing. He just two frames repeating that do nothing like that. I probably should actually go back to the, uh, the animation tab and let's go ahead and select Idle and we'll say loop time, not necessary because the clips are the, you know, the frames are exactly the same, so whether or not it pauses on two or repeats one and two, it actually doesn't matter, but we're just gonna do it for fun. Sway, it does matter. We'll loop sway so that the sway animation plays over and over again. Then we're gonna hit apply, and then we're gonna move on with our life. Great. Okay, so now idle's gonna play over and over and over again, but there will be absolutely no difference because those two, those two frames are exactly the same, but you can see it is looping here, it's going crazy. Cool, we need it to get to play these other animations. And there's a lot of different ways to do that. This is certainly not a demonstration of how to set up like a more robust animation system in Unity, but I will show you really quickly that what I need to do is make a transition from idle to sway, 
and then probably from sway back to idle, and from idle make transition to jump, and from jump back to idle. Okay, so I have transitions going from idle to sway, and sway to idle, idle jump, jump to idle. Uh, those trigger those transitions need to be triggered by something. So right now um, it's going to sway and then back, and then sway and bend back. And I don't want it to just trigger like that automatically. What I want to do is go ahead and select this transition and give some condition to it. Right now the condition that's being met is no condition, so it's transitioning. So first thing I will do is set up a trigger over here, because this is just a demonstration, and I will call this trigger um, play sway. You know what, let's call it sway trigger. Okay, and then I'm going to set up one more trigger, and we're probably guess we're going to call that one jump trigger. Then in the animator window, but uh, by the way, if you don't have that, you can just go up to window and find it in there. It's right there, animator, and then dock that tab wherever you want. Doesn't matter where you dock it; you can put it wherever you're comfortable. Um, I'm just working right here for fun. Okay, so. Um, we're going to select the arrow pointing towards sway, or the transition from idle to sway, and then we're going to say, hey, don't just transition to sway when nothing is met. Let me give you a condition to meet, and that is when sway trigger is triggered. And then we'll have it go right back to idle. So the condition for transitioning back um, will be nothing. It'll play the animation once and tr transition back to idle. And we'll, we'll, we'll do something different there in a second. So we're at idle, and if we want to transition from idle to jump, obviously we need to set the sway trigger, or we need to sweat, set the condition from sway trigger to jump trigger. And when the jump is done, we want it to go uh, right back. So the condition for the exit transition will be nothing. So no condition is met, it'll go right back. And so we should be able to just press play right here and see that nothing is happening. Perfect, uh, because our condition of sway trigger has not been met. There is no transition happening. Uh, and then you would want to do this in code. You would want to create a script, and you would want to uh, reference your animator. And you would want to say uh, animator uh, dot, I think it's set trigger. I believe it's set trigger. Uh, and then the string would be sway trigger and stuff like that. I'm not going to show you that maybe in a later video. Right now we can trigger them actually from within here. So if I just trigger it, you can see it switched. Look, uh, try to look two places at once. Look here and look here. As soon as I hit that trigger, he plays the sway animation. As soon as I trigger the jump trigger, he does the jump thing, right? Okay, very cool, but I, uh, you remember a few seconds ago I made the sway loop and it's not looping. Um, so what we need to do that is actually set an exit condition. And so we'll create a new trigger here, I guess. Um, I could just use the jump trigger and that would work fine, but it wouldn't be the best thing in the whole world. A bool would be better here. Is swaying um, is true, it should be swaying. When is swaying is false, it should not be swaying. But we'll just call this uh, sway done trigger. And the O has got to be capitalized because it's like do n, right? Okay. So then we're going to go ahead and select the exit transition out of this animation. We're going to actually give it a condition now so it doesn't uh, invoke or happen automatically, and we'll call that the sway do n trigger. And then we'll hit play, and you'll see now when we trigger the sway trigger, it's going to go to sway, and it's just going to keep repeating there until the done trigger is fired, and then we'll go back to sway. Okay, so honestly, though, a better way to do that is to set it as a bool or something else so that their condition is just is swaying. When it's true, it's swaying. When it's false, it's back to idle or whatever. So that is how you go from Magic of Voxel into Maya or any program capable of doing an FBX. Um, while I'm saying this, this thing should be swaying back and forth. Uh, and then into Unity and to set up an animation controller on your imported model and to attach some clips to it. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, we got a lot more Unity tutorials uh, coming your way and a lot more Magic of Voxel stuff. I don't know about Maya. I mean, I love Maya. Maya's my program, but I don't know how much I'm going to do with it because I feel like everybody's into Blender right now. Anyways, thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more, whatever else I said. Um, yeah, that's really it, guys. That's all I got.